Hi, welcome everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to estimate a rolling window ERDL model, and which is shown in this paper. This paper has done the ARDL model by changing the time period windows from 5 years to 10 years to 15 and 20 and then estimates the estimated the ARDL model. Uh, if you want to recreate this model, these authors can provide you the uh, module for the model and it's available for in MATLAB. But in, in today's video, I'm going to show you a simple version of this uh, rolling window ARDL which can be modified uh, as per your need and by the end of the video if you be with me you will know, you will see how uh, you can modify i will give, guide you how to change if you are changing the number of variables if you are changing the window size by the end of the video you will get to know about that so we, we, what we will be going to do is i will show you the simple module that can be uh, that can help you to do a rolling window ardl model in time series data in stata. The advantage of this model is that you already know what is the purpose of ARDL model but if you make a rolling window the advantage of rolling window is that you can see the sensitivity of the coefficients that is changing across the long time period data. So ideally if you want to run this uh, rolling window bounds testing approach you should have a very long data set so that you can pick windows of minimum possible size and in this paper they have picked window of 30 years which is the minimum possible threshold assuming the data is normal okay so let's go towards our uh, module and the codes are also shared in the comments description below and by the end of the video do let me know how how to understand these codes and how useful it is for your and uh, for your study so let's go towards data and I will show you my codes. So I'm going to read the data. I have a sample data of stock markets. So if I open it up, you can see that there are four stock markets and I have a data for four of them. And they, they are, since this, it's a daily data, so it's a very long data set. It's about, if you go by the end, it's 2,338 observations. So it's big enough to create as many windows as I want, as big windows as I want, so that you can see how the results are coming out. So now let's go back to the codes. So what I did, you have to declare the data is time series, control D, and you have to install the ARDL library. So SSC install ARDL. So since it is already installed in my stata, so I don't have to install it. So how you will run it? So my command is ARDL dependent variable and two independent variables. Lag selection automatic and maximum lags four and do the error correction equation. So when I run this, it will show me the ARDL model where uh, this ECM which is significant but the long run variables are insignificant and short run are significant. So data size is 2,334 and the R square is 8%. And if you do the bound test, it will tell you that the, the F test is 4.392, which is uh, bigger than the 10% bound test, but smaller than the others. And, and if you see the T value, it is bigger than in magnitude 1%, but smaller than the others. So the I value, probability value also confirms is that they are bigger than 5%, but they're smaller than 10%. Similarly, you come here, you can see that uh, at 10 percent it is r rejecting null hypothesis means there is uh, co-integration okay at five percent there's a dot so it's inconclusive because the test value at five percent is bigger than the uh, i zero value but smaller than the i one so it is inconclusive at one percent it is smaller than even i zero so no 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 rejection so no co-integration so this is a code that gives you a summary of the outcome. Then you can do the diagnostic of the overall model by, by running the model again and storing the regression results at EC rec. So when you run it, the ECM model will run it again and but store the results in rec. So you can restore the results. So they are restored and now 
so you can see the results again using simple regression method so the same results are there but the formatting is different because it's simple regression code but the results are similar only the adjustment that was done uh, is not there but the variables and specification is same so now we go for c4 Durban watson test so it is 1.99 no auto correlation now RHLM, it's also a test to check heteroscrasty. So there is heteroscrasty at first lag. Then Baroche Godfrey test. There is no autocorrelation. Then the C4 head test. So there is heteroscrasticity. And then over identification. At 5%, there is no missing higher order variables. Then go for VIF. So all of them are less than two for, for core section data. And, and if, if you see the reference of Gujarati, they are less than 10. So there is no multicollinearity. Then you can look for uh, structural breaks. So this command, it will only work for stata 14 or above, and you have to install it SB single. So when you run it, it will look for structural breaks in the data. If there are any, so it will simulate Let's wait for that. Now you can see that it has found that there is a structural break at observation number 1837 and it is significant. So there is one break in the uh, data. And if you want to make your model stable, you have to, you should create a dummy variable for this date and then add it as a exogenous variable. So it will improve the results so how why there's the need of improvement you can see it here so if you do the qsm6 you need to install qsm6 library when you run this uh, i made sure that the the commands are same just uh, difference is that the in the model the variable is turk but here the variable is a little bit different so what i can do i can stop it here stop the function and go in the library and change the variable to Perk. and you also have to add lag here so you have to completely adopt the specification that is used in the model so I will change it so when I run this model save it first when I run it, because this since data is long, it will take some time to estimate. As you can see, the QSM square diagram is shown and it is going out from this point. So there was a break somewhere in this observation. So, and I've already showed you that using SSP single, there was a break. So this way you can show your QSM graphs. So Let's move forward. Now I'm going to show you how to modify the code to do a move rolling window ARDL. So for that, I will increase the font size. So you have to open the clear the uh, temporary folder, create a new folder and say what items you are going to store. So I will store starting data value, ending data value, adjustment coefficient standard error adjustment coefficient variable number one pakistan variable number two st standard error pakistan variable number three uh, indonesia so I, even if i've used turk you can use any label so you can change it sc indonesia f value t value rmsc r square so these are the values that i'm going to store now what i've done I've assumed that my sample size should be 500 observations so that the distance is a daily data so it should be long enough time period. So what I've done, done is that I have subtracted 500 from the uh, final observation to see where should I stop by the end. So I will start from 1 till uh, 1838 so that when I'm on 1838 my ending value should be the last value of the data. So this way I have calculated. Okay, and then I've said that my next window will after 10 observations. So it will jump 10 every new loop. 
so there will be too many regressions and this why there will be many observations so loop will start from 1 jump 10 and run 500 observation regression until 1838 by that your sample size will become the last value so all the data will be used and what I did that it will add 500 to find the ending observation and then ARDL, MAL, PARC, TURK if time is more than I and less than observation end lags automatic maximum lags for an error term then I will say that store the starting value ending value coefficient of adjustment standard error adjustment coefficient of PARC first variable standard error first variable coefficient of second variable standard error second variable uh, FPSS, TSA, T value, RMSC, R square and then loop close, post close and open the data. You have to run all of them together otherwise the temporary folder will move and it will not run. Okay, first we will complete the results and then I will talk about how you can modify if you have uh, more than one variable or you will need to make smaller uh, windows or or more windows or less windows so when I run this you will see that it will run the RDL many times and it will let's see so it has done the calculation now you can see in my data file there is a new data set how many observation does it have control shift down 184 ARDL regressions for each it has given me additional coefficient standard error of that first variable, second variable and the standard errors, F value, T value, RMSC and R scale. You can extract as many things that you want and I will also tell you how I get to know how to extract what I want. So uh, by the end of the video I will tell you about that too. So then I generated the T value of the adjustment coefficient, control D. I also estimated the T value of first variable, control D and second variable now I plotted the adjustment coefficient variable and its t value so when I run this it is showing me the, the adjustment coefficient in blue and the t values in red and the critical value is minus 1.96 so whenever the red line is below the red horizontal line it was significant and you can also notice that the blue line is never crossing zero uh, it is going to the never is it's never going to the positive side and and in most cases it is significant so the model holds in moving windows and this is the starting observation value similarly we can do it for first variable so 1.96 positive 1.96 minus so this is the insignificance region and so so you see the red line it is crossing up from here and below from here so in this and this place they are significant and whenever it is in between it is the blue line is insignificant so this way you can assess the uh, second variable uh, first variable then we go for the second variable and you can see that the critical values region is here and for the red line it was significant here and somewhere here so two regions are there you can see the observation value and compare it in the with your excel file which year or which time it is so, so that you can uh, assess the data okay now what we can do is then now I, I'm going to present the f value and so if you present I'm going to present f value and it's a critical value because it sample observe variable numbers are not changing so critical value will not change so this is the critical value and you can notice that uh, f value is increasing the critical value in this region and in this region and somewhere here so if the model holds in this time period it's not here similarly you can plot the t value it is significant somewhere here but not here then you can plot RMSC. The purpose of plotting RMSC is you, you can notice that what are the time periods where your independent variables were very efficient in explaining the dependent variables and, and this is the region where it is minimum. So this is the way you can interpret root mean scale because technically 
there is no threshold so nobody knows how to compare it but in this case since i have plotted too many so you can notice that these are the time periods where the fundamental variables independent variables are very closely depicting the changes in the independent variables so model prediction error was uh, error was very small as compared to rest of the time period so it means uh, policy was very effectively working in this time period then you can also plot r square and you can see the r square was higher somewhere here and very low here so you, this is the place uh, this is this is the the the, the sh percentage explained so it means that in this region the the share of other variables was lower as compared to this region and if you can join it together if you want to combine graph you can see this graph so you can use it as a summary now coming back how you can find what you can extract so for that you have to run the overall model so so you have to load the data again because the data has changed so when you go to the overall model you can see these are the results and you write e return list so it will tell you what are the things that are stored so you can get tss ess case and so these are the values that are stored in the memory and 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 you can also get the matrix of various coefficients matrix of variance lag size and lags so you can extract these things so i use this data to this information to extract what i want and store it as a constant second information that you need to know is how you can change so in this portion uh, what you can do is that if you are let's say your observations are only 100 or, or let's say 500 so you have to first decide how much sample size you need to keep so let's say i, I would I like to run for 30 observations and it's an annual data so i will write 30 here and and this is i1 so and then uh, if your observation are like 1000 so minus 30 so it will be 900, 970 it should be here and then one from 970 and then you need to think how much window should i keep so if your data is not long you should reduce this number so that there are many uh, near 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 windows and if your data is very long you can make it bigger so that the windows are less okay you can may reduce it to one and the the but the paper that i showed you they use five because uh, and i used 10. so this way it, you can change the window size and then if you need to change the variables then you have to add the uh, the collection for which let's say there is another variable here then you have to add its its coefficient and its standard error so for the coefficient the, for the uh, for fourth variable uh, for the third variable you will have to write eb 1,4 and for its standard error and square root eb 4,4 so this way you can store that data too and then you can plot so this way you can do the rolling window ERDL uh, using Stata. I hope you understood and try it on your, on your data set and have a look how it works and do share it with your comments in the video. Thank you.